What is happening, everybody? Trey here, joined by my dad, Sean, and we are up to the year 2002 in our top 10 albums uh, by year draft. Uh, we have a back catalog going back to the year 1965 uh, up to today, uh, 2000s, dad, 2000 and 2001. I think we're overall really strong years, and uh, hey, man, up to 2002 now. Yeah, Trey, and if you guys don't know how this works, all right, pay close attention because you're going to choose a winner between us. It's S-H-A-W-N, but I'll accept any spelling, S-E-A-N, S-H-A-U-N, however you want to do it. Also, give us your top five or top ten albums, if you so choose, if you know the year 2002 quite well. And if you're a patron, you get to vote on an album out of here for our live listening party, album party that we do once a month on YouTube. And if you're not a patron, check out the Patreon link below or the Patreon link on the end screen, because without the patrons, this thing doesn't go. Well, Trey, you got that first pick this year. Mm -hmm. Some years it matters, some years it doesn't. It wouldn't matter to me this year because I thought one album was really a standout, but for once, you didn't take it with the first pick. Yeah, man, I'm uh, going a little off the beaten path here. I'm going uh, with a group called Carissa's Weird with the songs about leaving album. Uh, a bit of a slow core indie rock record. So if you're a fan of groups like uh, Galaxy 500, this might be something that appeals to you. Uh, it kind of switches um, almost every other song between male and female vocalists. And a couple of the members later form Band of Horses. Okay, I'm in. I got a Band of Horses yeah. top 10 up, and that got me to dive into Band of Horses. Okay, I got to listen to this album. Yeah. Yes. I did not listen to this. So this is their third and final record. Okay. Um, and so you have Matt Brook and uh, Jane, uh, Jen, excuse me, Champion as uh, the vocalist on here. And uh, I think that really helps the album stand out as a bit yeah. unique and, um, you know, the uh, subject matter a bit melancholic, a bit lonely in its theme. But, uh, man, the sounds so good that uh, you don't mind too much. Uh, some wonderful guitar atmospheres. Um, so you want to be a superhero. And the only mission when you leave are highlights for me. All right. My first pick was the one that I thought was just tremendous. I think you'll get a lot of love for this. Interpol, yeah. Turn on the Bright Lights, their debut. Only went to 101 in the UK and 158 in the US. But this is one of those albums, retrospectively, that people love. NME had it at 130 on their top 500 albums of all time. Pitchfork had it as an album of the year. And I mean, everybody else had it everywhere. And once I listened to it, I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, I see why. In a 2018 interview with Vice, Paul Banks, the lead singer, stated, as far as ease of making it, we had years to write these songs. The longest writing period of any of your records is your debut. Yep. We formed in 97, so it's five years and three and a half or four years of playing shows and trying out material. So it went down smoothly in the studio, and then you have all the excitement of it being your first album. I read that quote, Trey, because I've said that probably 25 times on this channel. Oh, yeah. Doing album reactions and reviews. The debut is so much easier because you've been cultivating the material forever. Highlights for me, PDA, Obstacle One, Say Hello to the Angels, NYC. This comes post 9-11. They're living in New York City, right? Mm. So it is kind of a post 9-11 album in a little bit of a way. And guess what? Later on in the countdown, there's also going to be another album right. that was inspired somewhat by 9-11. How about that? Yeah, I, teaser? I, I like that uh, pick, man. Uh, you know, Interpol, part of that uh, kind of post-punk revival yes. that happened in this uh, in this time period of music. And I mean, Obstacle 1 is, uh, you know, my, my favorite track by them in general. So a uh, good pick right there. Also, there, this album was a big influence on one of my favorite current bands that we're going to go see in September, The Killers. All so. right. Now, Trey, we come to my second album. And after I listened to this, I came in and told you, you got to listen to this. But you're already on to another year, so you probably haven't listened to this <laughs> I did yet. not. Sparks. Little little Beethoven. Their 19th album. Uh, they were brothers from L.A. who had a number two hit in the U.K. in 1974. Then they had a dance hit in 1979. It was a radical musical departure compared to their previous works. They only used strings, piano, and voices, but no drums. The result was both classical and pop music. The last several albums they had before this one, New Wave and Synth, because everybody's work, mm -hmm. right? Honestly, uh, Trey, this is like nothing I've ever heard. Okay, you're and I listen to a lot it. of albums. They have repeating song structures or chants laid over like orchestral arrangements. Um, so I listened to it once and I said, is this brilliant or do I hate it? Is this garbage? So I listened to it right away again and I'm like, yeah, I think it's brilliant. Uh, Ooh, okay, man, I gotta, I gotta check this. I'm, I've listened to a couple of their '70s records. I don't get it as much as I know they have such a big cult following. So uh, their band, I think, I need to spend a little more. Well, time I'll tell you on. what, if you don't get that, I don't know if you're gonna get this because this is different. But had big critical acclaim in the UK. They're much more famous in Europe than in the US. I don't have any songs that you need to listen to because you need to listen to them all. But be prepared. Don't put this on and go. I'm gonna listen to this because Sean said it was good. You can listen to the first couple songs and be like, what is this? 
Just listen to it all the way through. Mm-hmm. Set it down for a day. Listen to it again. And then come in the comments and flame me if you hate it. Because like <laughs> I said, I didn't know what I thought of it. Trey, you got a very acclaimed album at number two. Yeah, going to Queens of the Stone Age, Songs for the Deaf. Uh, again, another really acclaimed record. I yeah. enjoy their uh, debut rated R. Um, but uh, man, this one I think is the, the best Queens of the Stone Age work. Uh, a, a bit of a loose concept album that uh, is kind of kind of neat. It's almost like you're uh, sitting in the back seat and... And uh, flipping through the radio, uh, going on a drive from the California desert from L.A. to Joshua Tree. And, um, you know, there's uh, certain little segments and segues throughout the record that, uh, you know, makes a nice little creative touch. Uh, Dave Grohl joins the band here for the first time on drums, while uh, the great Josh Homie and Mark Lanigan provide Great Lanigan, man. Um, Lanigan pops up everywhere. Yeah, so, and and again, I maybe like Carissa's weird with the alternating uh, vocalist that, uh, I don't know, you, you don't hear that too often. Keeps it interesting. Um, so I, I enjoyed that. Again, the, the heavy record with the distorted guitars. And, of course, Grohl's drumming is as powerful uh, as ever. Favorites for me include Songs for the Dead, uh, which I actually did a song reaction to. That was my first introduction to That's this right. uh, record. Um, we Six Shooter, Short and To the Point, Go With the Flow, and uh, First It Giveth. So, um, I, uh, you know, this, this again, kind of like the Interpol record, had a lot of uh, buzz at the time. And my third pick here is going to be a uh, Sea Rose. Um, you know, very acclaimed band. I know uh, that you did a top ten I to did. them. Uh, I'm going. Um, and man, I, I should have looked this up beforehand. I'm just calling it the parentheses album uh, or the, the brackets album, whatever you want to call it. Their third record. Um, and man, this is a, a tale of two sides. And uh, just uh, you know, the arrangements on here is just instrumentally gorgeous. Uh, first half leans into a bit of a prettier sound where you have those keyboards really prominent. And then the latter half is on maybe a little more of the melancholic side of things. Uh, the lyrics, and I know you touched on this in the top ten, oh, are very much so. Are sung in Hope Landic, which is a made-up language. Yeah. Uh, this reached 51 on the chart. Uh, made up of songs they had played live for a couple of years, and they didn't want to have actual lyrics since they thought, hey, we we know how, how to do this right here, so hey, let's uh, just come up with this Hope Landic stuff. Um, and then no one ever knows if you're singing the <laughs> yeah. wrong lyrics. You just do whatever you want, man. Um, and it's it's interesting too um, because all of these are untitled songs so it's just like song one song four song eight which are my favorite song one four and eight um, I just think the the layering with the keyboards the guitars uh, the gorgeous string sections and uh, even the pretty vocals even though you know I, I obviously don't know what's being said it uh, it all works man so between the album title the <laughs> yeah. made up language and the songs not having titles it makes it interesting my third pick is a guy that I hate to say I never even heard of, man, so so don't throw the hate at me. Solomon Burke. Okay. Don't give up on me. He's considered one of the founding fathers of soul music, but he didn't have a lot of chart success in the 60s. Uh, James Brown, Wilson Pickett, Otis Redding had all that success. So after a little bit, his record company kind of pushed him down. He's considered the genre's uh, soul music's most unfairly overlooked singer was the quote I saw of its golden age. Atlantic Records executive Jerry Wexler, who's a really well-known guy in music history, referred to Burke as, quote, the greatest male soul singer Mm. of all time. Had 38 studio albums, 17 different labels, 35 singles that charted in the U.S. In 2001, he was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Rolling Stone ranked him number 89 and the greatest vocalist of all time, and I just never heard of him. He's got an interesting life. He he founded a bunch of businesses. He hmm. he had a like a chicken business. He had okay. all this other stuff that he did. Then he founded a church, preached at that church, kind of founded a Christian denomination, planted all these churches. Um, and then like this is insane. He was married four times. He had twenty one children, seven stepchildren. Ooh. At the time of his death, he had 90 grandchildren and 19 great-grandchildren. I mean, think about that. Just wrap your head around having 90 grandchildren. You go broke trying to buy these kids Christmas and birthday presents. Solomon left the legacy right this here. This man left a legacy. More ways than one. This album won the Grammy for Best Contemporary Blues Album. It had uh, just you know a bunch of different contributions of original and previously unreleased compositions, okay. top song writers, guest stars Daniel Lanois, and the Blind Boys of Alabama. Best songs on here, title track, Soul Searching, and None of Us Are Free of the Highlights. But wait a second, it just, Trey, has that old school mm-hmm. soul voice where you're like, let's freaking go. Yeah. There's just something about it that just speaks to you, man. No, man. I uh, I got to check this out. I, I believe I listened to one Solomon Burke record from, you know, the 60s. Oh, so it's probably the 60s. Um, but, uh, man, to, to have this, uh, you know, come out all this time later. And this kind of brought cool. him back. He ended up doing a bunch more albums okay. before he passed away. He passed away in 09 or 11. I can't remember. 
Next up for me, my fourth pick, Wilco, Yankee Hotel mm -hmm. Foxtrot. Get some love for this. Fourth studio album, lots of issues in the studio. They, they fired one of the band members mm -hmm. during it. All these issues. They were with Reprise Records. Reprise was bought by another record label, and they, I think it was Atlantic, but don't mm -hmm. hold me that. And they fired the guy that was the, the label head who loved Wilco. Another guy takes over, an A&R guy, and he comes in and tells them when they're done with the album, mm -hmm. guys... I don't like this album. It has no okay. singles. Redo it. They're like, we're not redoing it. So that A&R guy went back to the, the head of the record label and said, what's this? Let them release it independently. So Wilco goes out, gets their warrior, offers 50 grand to the record label to let them have the album. The record label comes back. He goes, you know what? You can have it for free and you're released from your record deal. <laughs> wow. So they end up signing with another record label. It goes to 13 in the U.S., their highest charting album. But Thought of as one of the best albums of this decade. Tweety's firing on all cylinders. Once again, not any song for me that stands out. I think it's a full album list. I just think it's really, really good. I did have another one of their albums okay. already that appeared for me. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, this album's probably well acclaimed compared to where we have it. So you might be surprised mm. it's actually this low. What do you think of this album? Oh, I, I think it's really strong. I think Jesus, Etc. is uh, you know, one of the best songs of this year um, off this record. And, uh, you know, I, I think going back to the mid 90s with Wilco kind of going into yeah. that con they were more you know almost alternative country yes, they were. and just seeing how their sound progressed uh, here um, uh, you know Jeff Tweedy I think is a great singer songwriter he is and, man he's so, very underrated um, you know if you, you hadn't chosen this uh, it, it would have popped up on my list but uh, going to my list now uh, going to my final picks uh, fourth here we have Coldplay's A Rush of Blood to the Head their second record 15 million sold worldwide eighth best selling album of the 21st century in the UK. Uh, of course, everybody knows Clocks. Everybody knows The Scientist. Yeah. Um, and I, I think those are just seminal songs, not only for the band, but just this whole type of musical I era. Um, I think the slower songs like uh, Amsterdam, uh, Green Eyes, I like quite a bit as well. Um, and I think this is the peak of the group, um, you know, even to this day. Gotta put a smile upon your face and uh, in my place, show the band in top form as well. And I uh, actually reviewed this record with one of my buddies, but uh, it is a uh, the only um, review we've ever done that's been uh, fully blocked because, you know, those are the early days of the channel. I was putting in uh, too much concert footage and, uh, alas, it's, it's lost. It's lost to history. It's out there somewhere, guys. We have it. We have it. We have control. <laughs> um, <laughs> I I'm glad to see you put this here because, you know, Coldplay gets a lot of hate. They do. They do. They get a lot of hate that's kind of misplaced hate. They still have some really great stuff, and so I'm glad to see that in your list. Yeah, and uh, finishing it off with... Nas's godson, his sixth record, um, went to 18 on the chart. And I think this, again, just shows uh, the best traits of Nas, man. Uh, he's an MC touching on everything here. Very personal record for him. Uh, his mother had recently died mm. at this point. Uh, he touches on religion, just his mental state. His upbringing uh, touches on his father as well. And, uh, of course, his feud with Jay-Z, which was uh, coming to an end around this time. Um, fantastic storytelling, catchy hooks, and lyricism throughout um, that uh, some really strong production from uh, The Alchemist, among many others. Favorites for me on this are I Can, Made You Look, and then Thug's Mansion, um, New York, which uh, features uh, Tupac. I was going to say, here, yes. Posthumously, of course, but uh, a really strong uh, overall album right there. Well, I, uh, I'm booking in mind with the whole 9-11 thing. Not, not totally based on 9-11, either one of those albums, but it had an effect on them. My last pick, Bruce Springsteen, The Rising. There you go. First studio album in seven years, but first album with the E Street Band in 18 years. Based in large part, not totally, because a lot of the songs were written before this, mm -hmm. but some were written after on his reflections on the 9-11 attacks. Um, centers upon the themes of uh, relationship struggles, existential crisis, social uplift. Won a Grammy for Best Rock Album, the title track, which is just legendary when you listen mm -hmm. to it. It can give you goosebumps because he, he wrote it about the fireman. The rise, the song The Rise is about the fireman going into the Twin Towers. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a very powerful listen. I know we did a reaction. We did. To we got a full album reaction up to this. Won two Grammys uh, for that song. 73 minutes, 15 songs. Title track, Lonesome Day, Into the Fire, My City of Ruins. There's a lot of good ones on here. Now, Trey, we're going to get to our honorable mentions and there's a lot because i'm listening to a yeah. lot of albums for those years after everything now this from the church of course the eminem show from eminem Huge record sea change from beck which we talked about i think a lot of people would have near the mm -hmm. top of their list original pirate material the streets very interesting stuff mm -hmm. here uk hip-hop stuff very okay. interesting let go by not a surf hate by the delgados 
uh, and the last broadcast by Doves. Those were all ones that were in play for me. Mm-hmm. Then, of course, American Four by Cash. Maybe his best of the American series. Everyone thinks his. I think one might be better. Um, El Cielo by Dredge. I've got a, a reaction to that. Uh, Tallahassee by the Mountain Ghost. They actually have two albums they, they mm-hmm. brought out this year. I like Tallahassee better. Trust by Woe. Stereo by Paul Westerberg. Control by Pedro the Lion. And you can you can take over. Yeah, uh, another one I think a lot of yeah. people would have is the Flaming Lips. Uh, you know, Yoshimi battles the uh, Pink ro- uh, Robots. Um, I'm not as big a fan of that record as I am the Soft Bulletin. Me so, neither. Uh, you know, it's, still a good album. It's still, but... still on the honorable mentions though. Uh, Boris, the uh, Japanese kind of um, stoner metal type band, very uh, heavy and apropoly named for their record Heavy Rocks right here. A uh, broke broken social scene. You forget it in people. Noise rock band McCluskey do Dallas. Uh, the Roots, Phrenology, um, you know, one of the great uh, hip-hop bands of all time. And then i uh, got to show some love for uh, my emo over here, Taking Back Sunday's Tell All Your Friends. Uh, and you, you touched on the rest. Yeah, and I forgot Failure, Failure by Kathleen Edwards. I was into an eclectic mix of stuff. So that is going to do it. So remember, you got to tell us who you think won. And give us your top five albums, or top two, or three, whatever you got, man. Maybe you don't got a lot of albums because we we got a lot of we got a lot of uh, age ranges in our group here. So maybe this isn't your thing this year. Yeah, and uh, we'll be back next week, man, with 2003. Uh, again, I think, uh, yeah, you see and you touched on that very eclectic, a uh, little bit of everything here uh, in this year, then, um, you know, maybe not the, the heights of 2000 no, and 2001. But, but a lot of good yeah, stuff. Yeah, so it's still quite strong. So uh, until next time, y'all, thanks for watching. Happy listening, and we will see you.